What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. Today I wanted to actually talk about Pokemon that I believe need buffs to be competitively viable in the current generation of VGC. These Pokemon all have something that interests me, whether it be the design or just the potential that they have as far as stats go or movesets go or even typing, but they have something off about them that keeps them from being competitively viable. So. Uh, what I want to do is just talk about these Pokemon and some ideas I have as far as buffing them go. If you guys enjoy this standpoint in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. That's my comment question of the day. What do you guys think is a Pokemon that needs to be buffed and how would you buff it? Let me know in the comment section, leave a like, all that helps, and let's get into it. So this is going to be in no particular order. This isn't really a top five, but it is going to be five Pokemon. And I want to start off with Orbeetle. Now, Orbital is a bug and psychic type introduced into the newest generation of Pokemon, and it has some pretty cool stats. It's got 60 HP, 45 attack, 110 defense, 80 special attack, 120 special defense, and 90 speed. Now, obviously, while bug psychic isn't the greatest of defensive typings, it is pretty good in terms of stats go. The 60 HP isn't very high, but 110 defense and 120 special defense actually mean that it has potential to like hold a, a psychic seed or a grassy seed or something to increase that and become very annoying with access to um, recover and other moves that could just allow it to sit on the field for quite a while. In my opinion, its main issue is that it was built for a Dynamax format, and you can kind of tell that it has that issue because its G-Max form has access to the move G-Max Gravitas, a very powerful psychic move that uh, that causes the field to have the gravity effect, which if you don't know, increases the accuracy of moves, or rather decreases the evasion of the Pokemon, allowing for things like hypnosis and uh, other inaccurate moves like Sleep Powder to land more consistently, which is a very powerful thing. It also makes it so Pokemon that uh, are not touching the ground end up touching the ground, allowing them to be hit by ground moves. So that's really cool. Um, the thing is, I think this Pokemon does everything it needs to succeed, except it relies on that G-Max form to have the move Gravity, which, while in itself isn't very strong, Gravity comboed onto a Pokemon that has access to Hypnosis like this Pokemon makes it actually a really scary Pokemon to face. Now, of course, it isn't as fast as I would like it to be, so I would also buff its speed to be 100. This would allow it to be at the same speed tier as Pokemon like Volcarona and allow it to get off faster recovers, faster gravities, faster hypnosis, and just be a generally annoying Pokemon while not being too strong. It's actually going to be a really solid support Pokemon with access to Struggle Bug, Gravity, Hypnosis. I think it could be really cool. Uh, it's just missing that one thing, and it's going to be that extra 10, uh, extra 10 points in speed and access to gravity. So yeah, that's my idea for uh, Orbeetle. Let me know about that one. I think it might actually be like the perfect buff that it might get in the next generation, but yeah. Another Galarian Pokemon that I want to talk about is Galarian Stunfisk. I was actually really hyped when I saw this Pokemon. It is one of my favorite designs in the Galar region, which I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me. They're going to say, I think it looks dumb. I think it's like gross looking. They ruined Stunfisk. Some people really like Stunfisk. I actually never liked it. I like this version of Stunfisk. I think it looks really cool. Uh, this thing's got 109 HP, 81 attack, 99 defense, 66 special attack, 84 special defense, and 32 speed. It's almost like they just put it in a random number generator. Um, but it is a, essentially the stats are like a remix of regular Stunfisk stats, so I don't want to mess with that when buffing it. I think that thematically it should keep the same stats as Stunfisk, but moved around a little bit. It has a exclusive ability in Mimicry, which makes it so its typing actually changes to be the typing that uh, the terrain would make it. So Grassy Terrain makes it Grass type, Psychic Terrain makes it Psychic type, Misty for Fairy, Electric for Electric, obviously, that's how it goes. This thing... It doesn't hit hard enough, it isn't bulky enough to be a wall, it has no recovery moves, and all of its its moveset is complete garbage. It doesn't even get access to like Iron Head. Its strongest move that it can take advantage of with its uh, higher attack than special attack is Metal Claw, which sucks, because you're not going to use that 66 special attack to click Flash Cannon, right? So my idea for this thing is really lean in, really, really lean into the bear trap motif. Like I think the bear trap motif is actually really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess around with its stats and I'm going to give it a better ability. My idea is to have its HP and attack stat completely switch. So 81 HP, 109 attack. That will allow for its attacks to actually hit pretty hard. That's almost 110, which is actually a pretty solid stat. And I want to change its ability, or at least give it access to a new ability in Strong Jaw. I think that Strong Jaw is pretty thematically appropriate since it does get access to Ice Fang. Uh, it will be able to take advantage on that move. I believe it gets Crunch, I'm not entirely sure, but I would actually like it to get Jaw Lock 
Its exclusive move right now is Snap Trap, which is essentially like the, hey, you're going to stay in the field move, where I think it's actually better off with Jaw Lock, which is actually a move exclusive to Dreadnought. It's an 80 base power biting move that is Dark type and traps the opponent. I think that's much better. I prefer if it was Steel type, but I'm cool with the Dark type. Uh, and I would also give it access to Iron Head. This would allow for the Pokemon to actually be a pretty solid Trick Room Pokemon, you know, dealing a pretty solid amount of damage. It would actually turn uh, Jaw Lock from an 80 base power move to a 120 base power move, which is absurd. Uh, and it would trap the Pokemon on the field. So yeah, I think under Trick Room, it'd actually be a really solid Pokemon. Steel Ground isn't that bad. And of course, giving it access to Iron Head would allow it for... Uh, would allow it to have a more powerful steel type move. In fact, with uh, the ability Strong Jaw, Jaw Lock, and Iron Head would be the same power pretty much. So, yeah, I think uh, Galarian Stunfisk would actually benefit a lot from this buff. I think it would shoot up in viability. It'd be so much better if they just swapped that attack and uh, an HP stat and gave it just two more moves. That's all it really needs. Next up, we have Vespaquin. Vespaquin, I think, really, really got the short end of the stick in Generation 8. It used to have three exclusive moves in Heal Order, Attack Order, and Defend Order, which, you know, they, they weren't like the best moves. They were just clones of other moves, but they were still very vital to Vespaquin's bulky playstyle. While Bug in Flying isn't the best stat or the best um, typing for a defensive Pokemon, getting rid of access to this thing's Heal Order and getting rid of access to Roost on this thing made it so it can't wall anything. It just kind of sits there and you know, gets KO'd in a turn or two. Doesn't do anything very strong, has very little attack, but I think it has potential in the format if we gave it a very, very slight buff. Actually, this is a pretty huge buff. These moves are awesome, but I think it's all it really needs. So this thing has 70 HP, 80 attack, 102 defense, 80 special attack, uh, 102 special defense, and 40 speed. It's pretty bulky, you know, the, the typing doesn't help, but it is a queen. So therefore, why not give it queenly majesty? Queenly Majesty is a phenomenal ability. It blocks all priority moves coming out from the opponent, meaning that Vespa Queen can have a place in the VGC format by just being on the field. It blocks Fake Out, it blocks Grassy Glide, it hard walls Rillaboom, it can beat Rillaboom 1v1 pretty easily, and it's just a nice and bulky Pokemon. To complement that bulkiness and the fact that I think it'd make a great support Pokemon with some slight buffs, I think it needs access to Roost. I don't care if it gets Heal Order back, I think Roost is exactly what it needs. Because... Roost would allow it to lose that, um, it would allow it to lose its flying typing for a turn and thus lowering the amount of weaknesses it gets. And if it's in grassy terrain, it can actually heal a little bit at the end of the turn by roosting and then getting that uh, terrain recovery. Another move that I think is an absolute crime that this thing doesn't get is Pollen Puff. This thing is a bee. What do bees do? They pollinate flowers. Give it Pollen Puff. Not only would it allow it a decent bug stab for just hitting things, but it would allow it to heal its partners. It, it makes it like a good support Pokemon. We've seen other Pokemon with access to Palm Puff actually be pretty decent. Uh, we've seen Rabombi. I know Rabombi isn't the most common Pokemon, but it can, it can heal its partners. I forget what other Pokemon get Palm Puff. Uh, Amoongus. Amoongus is probably the greatest Palm Puff user in the format. It's able to use that to uh, heal its partners while being pretty strong under Trick Room with Spore and stuff. So while this thing wouldn't be on the same level of Amoongus, it would have a niche in blocking priority moves and just being a generally nice support Pokemon. So yeah, those are the buffs I'd give Vespaquin. Next up is a personal favorite of mine. I think Absol is just, it's such a great design for a Pokemon, a, a disaster goat. It's literally just disaster goat but its stats make it so, so unusable. I've tried to use this thing. I failed to qualify for Players' Cup 3 with this thing. It's disappointing. So what does this thing have going for it? It has Super Luck, Justified, and Pressure. I didn't list Pressure because it wasn't really worth it. It's got 65 HP, really high attack set of 130. That's the same as Urshifu. Uh, it has 60 defense, 75 special attack, 60 special defense, and 75 speed. The only stat here that I would change is its speed. Having 75 speed is a crime. This thing's so frail and it's it's so slow. It doesn't do anything. It's a glass cannon that isn't fast enough to fire. So I honestly think that it deserves the speed it had as a mega Pokemon. I think we can buff its speed to 115 and we're like set as far as stats go because it wouldn't be better than Urshifu. It'd have the same attack stat, but it'd be faster and wouldn't have access to the 100% crit move. So essentially, it's like there are two different niches that need to be filled. If you want to use Urshifu Dark to hit hard and have a decent um, and have a decent uh, speed stat, you can do that, right? But if you want to use Absol for that extra speed and access to moves like Snarl or other moves like Icy Wind, other support moves, you have that option. It'd actually be a pretty decent Focus Sash user in the format then. You could run something like 
protect icy wind sucker punch knockoff and it'd be really nice now the other thing i would do is i would actually lean into the motif of it being a disaster pokemon this thing doesn't have access to earthquake it has access to blizzard it has access to thunder it has access to other like disaster moves like rock slide why not give it access to earthquake also hurricane while we're at it but hurricane isn't really necessary but giving it earthquake would allow it to hit uh, Pokemon like Stack Attacka for pretty decent damage without having to lock itself into um, lowering its defenses, which are already really low, like close combat or superpower. Um, and it would just be a decent thing. It would be a decent move for hitting powerful Pokemon like Heatran. It wouldn't be like the biggest inclusion to its moveset, but I do think it's kind of weird that the disaster Pokemon doesn't get essentially like the quintessential disaster move. So yeah, I think Absol just needs a little bit more speed, and by a little bit, I mean a lot. 75 to 115 is quite literally a stat buff of 40 points, uh, and it needs Earthquake. So yeah, next up is the last Pokemon on this list. I think that Cursula is such a cool Pokemon. The only issue is it doesn't have Trick Room. Why doesn't this thing have Trick Room? I think it's perfect. Look at it. It's got 60 HP, 95 attack, which was surprising when I found that out. Why is its attack stat so high? Um, it has 50 defense, 145 special attack, 130 special defense, and 30 speed. This thing is meant to be used in a Trick Room. If you use it without Trick Room, it's getting KO'd in a turn by, by Urshifu Dark or any kind of Dark type Pokemon or any Pokemon with a halfway decent physical attack stat. If you use it under Trick Room, this thing is much harder to deal with. If this thing had access to Trick Room, it'd be much easier to use because the issue with Cur with Cursula is while it is a very powerful Trick Room Pokemon with access to a lot of cool moves like Giga Drain, Burning Jealousy, Water moves too, it has access to so much coverage. It even has Rock coverage. It has Ghost coverage. It has everything it needs. It does not have Trick Room itself. You need another Pokemon to set up Trick Room for it. And I don't think it'd be busted if it had a Trick Room. I think it'd be a decent Focus Sash Trick Room user because it won't be able to... You, it, it, you can't fake out this Pokemon. You'd have to taunt it or knock it out. By giving it a Focus Sash and Trick Room, it'd be able to set up the Trick Room and then on the next turn, take advantage of it for itself. If, if you try to use this Pokemon on like a Trick Room team, it's a little bit harder to get away with because most Trick Room Pokemon are Psychic, uh, are Psychic or Ghost type Pokemon, which means that you're not really spreading around the the defensive um, the defensive typing. Like, how am I saying it? Defensively, they share a lot of weaknesses, Ghost and Psychic. Uh, they're both weak to Ghost and they're both weak to Dark, which isn't great. And it makes it so like you just, it, it, there isn't very much roll compression going on. Having Cursula be its own Trick Room setter would allow for more roll compression. And it'd almost be reminiscent of something like Stack Attacka in my opinion. And I know it isn't exactly like Stack Attacka, but the reason it reminds me of it is because it, it could be a great comeback Pokemon. Uh, with Stack Attacka, it's not only its own Trick Room setter, but it's also a very powerful sweeper under Trick Room. This Pokemon would remind me of that. It's a low speed Trick Room setter that could make a comeback by going for its variety of coverage moves and powerful stab ghost moves. So yeah, curse low with Trick Room would be absolutely insane. That's gonna be it for this video. I wanna know what you guys think about my ideas in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, and share your opinion on what you think needs to be buffed. But with that, I'm gonna call it, have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.